all right guys as you can see the load on my trailer is not what you would call a money-making load so I did my pre-trip inspection the other day I found oil and I mean water in the oil or coolant in the, in, the, in, the, in the oil so one of the first things they did I pulled off the uh, water pump to check the timing cover which is this right here and a popular problem with these engines is to have a pinhole let the water go into the oil and this timing cover actually looks really really good the next step I did I pulled off my passenger side valve cover I made sure all my injectors were still torqued because if an injector comes loose it could let water go down on top of the cylinder um, they was all torqued good. Pulled all the glow plugs out and I applied pressure to each glow plug hole, each cylinder. And when I did it to number seven, I can hear air moving inside. Doesn't sound like it's coming out any of these coolant ports. Not, not, not even the one here for the, the heater hose return. I don't hear any air coming out of here, but it is going into the, into the uh, interior of the engine somewhere. So. It sounds like a head gasket or crack block or crack head or something. So I've decided to get ahead and start pulling, pulling this engine. Uh, I have a spare from a wreck, wreck truck. I pulled it out a couple months ago. I was going to put it in my personal truck. But um, I need to get this thing back up and going so I can get out there and make some money. Uh, so. What I've done is I've pulled off the whole front clip, which you saw outside. Uh, I've left the air conditioning intact, and I've got my transmission cooler back here. Uh, I should have just enough room to snake this thing out of there. Uh, I'm gonna pull this next. Uh, pull some of the stuff off the top of the engine. Fuel lines, starter wire, the ground wire, stuff like that. Uh, and you have to take and, and jack this um, cab up if you don't want to pull the turbo. The turbo is way back where it's hard to get to, and then, then you've got, they have issues with leaking back there. So um, I found when I pulled, pulled the other motor out, I just disconnected the first six. You know, the, there's, there's eight bolts to hold the cab on. I, I totally removed the first six, and then the last ones I left loose. That way it would kind of the, the cab aligned so I don't have to work too hard to, to get, you know put it back in place so that's what I'm working on today uh, it's a lot of work but you know you gotta kind of love these old these old 7.3s they're extremely reliable I do not know why this thing failed this, this engine was running really really good I had one problem which uh, I was working on diagnosing and then, then this popped up so let me get to it All right, one of the pain in the butt things about dealing with these things is these fuel lines. They've got these connectors on there. I've got to disconnect both of these fuel lines. It's the incoming fuel and, and, and then the return uh, goes back to the tank. So you've got to pop these retainers loose. You can't really see the one in the back. It's there. So, 
you don't already have them, go buy yourself some of these things. They work on the air conditioning, air conditioning and the fuel lines. Uh, you've got to push this into the fitting and push the hose connector towards this to release the, the, the clips and then you can pull it right apart. I've cleaned them up a little bit. I need to spray those on the floor. Help I wasn't blind in one eye and I can't see out the other one. I'm sure y'all know what I mean. Alright. So gotta get this push it in towards that hose connector. You just sit up block a few. Push this in. There we go. And then come right loose. Without that tool, good luck. I've made some out of plastic caps from bottles and stuff. Do yourself a favor, just go ahead and buy the real thing. They're super cheap. The thing is, you don't don't ever think about one until you need it. And you're 20 miles from the 20, 30 miles round trip from the auto parts. And you don't want to jump in the truck or maybe the only truck you got is the one you're working on. You don't have much choice. Unless you want to call Uber. Alright. Just want to close. Push it into it. That's what does it right there, that little tool. I mean it's easy. So you can imagine what the wrong tool will be like. So I don't know if you can see inside there they've got these tangs, those tabs. There's four of them. You have to depress those. But that's what it's gonna hold on the back side of that lip right there. It's those tabs. So if you put this in there it's got to go all the way to that right there to pick them tabs up and you have to push this towards it see how that goes all the way up there like that you got to push it like that push this this way that way those tabs are up on top of that plastic and then you can pull it back off this has to stay up against there and like I said I have done it with piece of plastic cut from a, a bottle cap but you see I went out and bought these it makes quite a difference All right, here we are. Uh, I don't want to hate to admit how long it's taken me to get to this point, but uh, suffice to say, everything's disconnected from this motor, except for the ground strap on the passenger side there in the rear. Um, I know there's enough slack I can get this thing part way out and be a lot easier to reach it uh, then. And I don't believe there's one on the driver's side, but I, I certainly will be looking for anything that's left connected. So. Uh, 
pulling this one with the transmission in place under the truck so it's it's uh, transmission's unbolted from the engine I'm just not sure how easy this is going to be able to move uh, I have a brace clamped to the underside of my uh, the rear side of my, my leaf springs being a four wheel drive has leaf springs so hopefully nothing goes bang or falls off or hopefully we can get this thing on out of here let's see what happens The uh, ground wire disconnected. Just a little bit more. Clear the oil filter. Pull that truck back a little bit. Ah, right, there it is. Got it here on this Harbor Freight stand that they uh, people have assured me works with these these engines. It's rated for 2,000 pounds, the engine's about a thousand. Um, I don't think I put 2,000 pounds in this thing. Yep. Harbor Freight special. But the thing is, I I had to get it off off of there. I can't put the other engine on there with the chain hoist tied up. Other engine is sitting over here on a homemade stand. Just threw together out of some scrap angle iron and I've got it on that cart. So when I'm ready for it, I'll wheel it over there and uh, hoist it up and start the process over in reverse, get that thing put in. <coughs> what I'm gonna do before I before I do that, number one, I'm going to clean some things up in here. Uh, they don't look real, real bad, but it can certainly look a whole lot better. And that evaporator inside of that air box right there, a whole lot easier to get to now. I'm going to take that cover off, pull the evaporator about halfway out, and I'm going to clean that. And you want to talk about having some good cold air and good airflow. Uh, 
if you've ever done that on one of your trucks, you'll know what I'm talking about. You get some really good airflow uh, by cleaning that, that evaporator. Like I said, it's, it's a lot of hard work. It's hard to get to. But uh, I did it on my red truck when I had the, uh, was doing the valve cups. Uh, and it made an outstanding difference. So that's what I'm going to be doing probably for the rest of the day. Just get, get things cleaned up a little bit. I may not even get to it today. I may, I may just stop it right here for today. Uh, I could get me some Duke greaser and clean all this up. Look for any kind of wiring issues that you can't really see. Be a time to take care of it. So let me get to it. All right, that truck's a little heavier than the last one. It didn't really want to move backwards. Probably would have helped if I took it out of gear. So I'm gonna get in here, I'm gonna clean this up and I'm gonna clean that evaporator. And then get ready to put that other motor back in here. All right, that looks a whole lot better. Um, let that drip a little bit and then I'm, I'm gonna get some tools ready and get into that evaporator, get it cleaned. And then while this thing is drip drying, um, maybe I'll put a fan in front of it, I don't know. Uh, I need to go put my spare motor completely back together, just get it ready. There's a few things I robbed off of it uh, over time. So, uh, let me get to it. Oh, by the way, this is what I used, um, Mean Green Super Strength. Uh, I used it 100%. Um, yeah, I guess it kind of worked. I mean, it's, I don't remember what I paid for it. I bought this, uh, uh about a year ago when I had problems with my red truck that my spare engine when I had problems with it with the injector cups when it had the fuel the diesel fuels all inside the, uh, uh, the coolant uh, I was going to try using that to, to clean out the inside and after reading the do's and don'ts uh, I decided to don't um, wound up you know flushing it with uh, 
I think I use Dawn dish detergent and uh, many, 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 many cycles of cleaning to get that thing, thing to de diesel out of that. So, anyway, that's what I used. I, I'm not saying it's good or bad. It's, it's just what I had, and, and uh, certainly having to drive into town and go get a bunch of cans of degreaser, which which I know works, but uh, it, it did its job. That's a nice place for you to go. Hopefully I'll remember it's down there. Pretty much disappeared. I'll have to search for it. I think it's underneath this insulating wrap. So, as you can see, that side's real clean. That's not the side we're worried about. Sure, it'd be nice if the dirty side was the side you can get to real easy. But, to get this out, we're going to have to, this accumulator here is going to have to be raised up along with this line right here, this line and the other line. I have to take this brace off right here. We're going to have to get this accumulator loose to where we can pick this up enough. And truth be told, you could probably take the whole system completely out of the truck since, the, you know, I've got the compressor loose, the, you know, it, all the lines are tied together. You could probably take the whole thing out of the truck, but I, I mean, I don't need to, but you could take the whole system out as one piece uh, and not without dropping your charge. Uh, so I got a bunch of stuff to take apart in there. I'm not going to bore you with that. I'll just put it on time lapse. All right, well, I forgot to do the time lapse, but this is the bracket that comes out from underneath here. I've just spun it up so I didn't have to disconnect this uh, and any of this stuff here. Um, it just needs to be out of the way. I took the, uh, the resistor out for the blower, took the blower motor out. Uh, to get the blower motor out, you need to get this uh, vacuum pump out of the way. Uh, on a diesel, this is what replaces your, your engine vacuum for your you know your, your dampers and stuff your air conditioning so uh, this thing here is a catch-22 so you can loosen up these clamps that hold the accumulator uh, it's wrapped in insulation and, and everything in not very good shape underneath here there's two screws there's one right here 
and there's one down here. Uh, I have taken them off in the past. I'm gonna try it without without taking them apart. It's it's real real hard to get in there. You you know it's it's like I said it's catch twenty two. Uh, this is in the way of that, and that's in the way of, of of getting getting this thing further out of the way. So I think I've got enough here to get it get get me enough movement to get this thing up where I can expose the back side of this thing. It doesn't have to go very far. Uh, let me see, I'm getting a gap in there. Let's see what's holding me back from. He's out of the way a little bit. This here isn't going to let it go very far. That's going to have to do it. That's that's really enough. That's really all we need. This one actually don't look very dirty. But there's probably a ton of crap in there. I'm going to put the camera showing the other side when I go to rinse it. And, and you're going to see probably a bunch of stuff come out of there. Uh, I need to make sure I don't have anything that down there is going to be damaged by that coil cleaner. you all can see all that stuff is pushing out. I can't get it out the very top, so that's why I'm going to hit from this side here. Put the chemical up in there. And yes, this stuff feels really, really good on my hands and stuff. Let that push out a little bit. Designed. Tell from what I'm saying on my side, it's getting a lot of crap out of there cleaning it. I may go ahead and do another, another round.
goes backwards, which is really the direction I should be going. I think I'm going to hit it again. Let's just show you if you can tell the difference from the inside. I'll shine a light in there, but I don't really think I have to. Let's see. Before it had a kind of a goldish, tannish looking color. When I started hitting with that spray, I, all kinds of crap was coming out of there. It was, you couldn't see it all that well at, at first that it was in there, but it was. So I'm going to hit it all again. Might as well. Ah, this isn't quite as dramatic as it would have been if I hadn't uh, already sprayed some on there and rinsed it off once. Uh, but this is how this stuff works. What I'm doing now, I'm, I'm just kind of skim off the top surface the little bug and stuff that's stuck to the front. I don't, I don't really want to blast it into it. I'll probably get my brush and kind of brush that a little bit. But, uh, All right, where I left off yesterday afternoon was uh, got the motor put in place, uh, took a little bit of finagling and, and adjusting the alignment, uh, had to uh, lower the rear chain a little bit so they get the back end to sit down a little bit. Once I got two bolts on the bottom of the transmission, uh, everything lined up pretty well. You know, it took, me, it took me a minute to figure out what I had to do, but. I got it and I, it was very satisfying to get, to get the thing in there and all lined up torque converter all lined up um, you know there's there's uh, you can slide torque converter in and out a little bit and I'll have to put the nuts on there uh, you see these, uh, these lock nuts um, Ford doesn't have them so I'm gonna have to go someplace like fast and all if I want wanted to buy new buy replacements um, I'm just gonna take Clean, clean, clean them up and uh, put, put, put some blue Loctite on them. Uh, I don't think it'd be a problem, but that's just, just a little extra insurance. Uh, got a ton of stuff put back on there. Uh, I'm a little worried. 
afterwards I was sitting there and I was like, gee, which which fuel line goes where? So I, I traced them out and everything, and uh, uh, I know at the, at the fuel tank that they're a different size. The return is 5 16ths and the fuel line, the supply line is 3 8 And apparently that's the same, uh, or it is the same up here. I, 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 I verified it. So you can't get, can't get them wrong. Uh, I cleaned all of the locations where the, like the, this bolt here, I, I, I took a, a wire wheel to all the, the ground locations. Uh, I'm gonna make sure I get a good ground, a, a bad ground of these things and cause all kinds of problems. So, uh, a little advice I got, I got from somebody that I've been talking to. Uh, but, Hopefully I'll have this thing where I can run up to the store today and give it, give it, give it a try. Uh, got a lot of stuff. Hopefully I can stick it out and not uh, not get discouraged or anything. But the worst of it's over. Get, just getting that thing back in and bolted in place, uh, line up the transmission. That that was the thing I was worried about the most. The rest of it is just all just little stuff, so to speak. So let me get to it.
all right we're back out here at it uh yesterday i finished off i um i installed my radiator hooked a coolant bottle up to it hooked all the lines up and then i added a line here so i could pressurize the system i set the regulator uh, on my tank down to like uh 15 psi and i just want to make sure i didn't have no light and leaks or anything uh before i wind up putting coolant in this thing uh one of the things that i've wanted to do is i use an edge programmer and i had bought another one of these sensors i have one in my transmission to give me transmission fluid temperature uh on the fitting off the side of the, the 4r100 transmission uh, and i wa wanted to know what my coolant temperature was so the this is the water pump out of the other engine uh so the support here on the side it's it's three eighths um and the sensor is an eighth inch so i had to get a bushing so you can see right here this this is where it's going to get its reading it's, it's right right near the the uh the, the thermostat um so I, I needed a uh a bushing here's the the probe it's eighth inch okay uh and it, it goes in a little ways if i just the stock bushing it would come up flush about like that and that's yeah it'll kind of get a temperature reading if it, it may be maybe accurate i don't know how accurate it's going to be so i wanted it to to go in there a little bit further so this the body of this is threaded right here and then it's it's about 10 millimeter diameter right there a little bit bigger than three eighths of an inch so what i actually did if you can see down there in the threads i actually tapped it in further then i ran it ran a drill in there so about a about a quarter inch down into it uh, i drilled it out with 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 a, with a 1330 seconds it's the next size bigger than three eighths on a typical set uh ran a tap back to it again so now and this is just hand tight you can see i've, I've got got that where that probe's going to come through a lot further and and there's still room down there for, for it to tighten a little bit so that's about what I'm expecting to see about how far I think that'll take. If it, if I could bottom it out, I doubt very much I could bottom it out. It still isn't going to hit hit this little tower here for the uh, uh, where, 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 where the, where the thermostat uh, closes it off at. So anyway, that's that's where I'm at right now. I, I wanted to get this done before I put the coolant in there. Uh, the other thing I bought, and this is just a a hokey way to do this, is I bought this valve and some, some fittings here. I'm gonna stick that in, in my in my coolant line while, while I've got it apart. I, I may go ahead and get a, you know, I'm gonna find a one that works off of uh, either electric or vacuum uh, actuation so that uh, just just to shut the water off going going to my my heater core, give, give, give me a little bit even colder air conditioning. Uh, uh, I hate having to run it on max AC all the time. I prefer to be able to get some fresh air into you know if you've had a car and you, you drive with max air air all the time you're sweaty yeah after a while the cars when you first turn that, that ac on you smell that smell that that's you're smelling yourself so uh, i prefer to be able to run run it with with a little bit of outside air get in there so it exchanges some of the air in the, in the vehicle so uh, I'll be able to close that water off and maybe, maybe the air conditioner will be cold enough to, to be able to run it that way. So anyway, that's where I'm at. Uh, like I said, this, this is just off that other engine. Uh, I'm, I'm going to, I've already got the plug out of the side over there and I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to uh, get that sensor installed and get my clutch fan back on there and a whole bunch of other little nitpicking things i got to put back together to get this thing running. I guess y'all can tell I got this thing running. Uh, no leaks. Kind of work all the bubbles out of the cooling system. I popped it off after I got it up to temperature. And uh, I'm going to be replacing the coolant that's in here. What's in there now is, is the, the green stuff. This truck has already had the um, ejector cup replaced, so I can put the the better better uh cooling in there so i'm not gonna do that but this is what i had i didn't want to waste a whole bunch of money on coolant if, the, if this something's gonna go wrong if i had to dump it or if i had a bad leak 
I put something in there that works that was in there before. Uh, my, let me shut this truck off. Um, here's my, here's my. Here's my, my, my display here. So I've got the engine oil temperature is 179, the engine cool temperature 184.2. Uh, so I, ha I've, I've drove it around the yard for a little bit. Uh, I got it where uh, the cool temperature spiked up and I think that's when, 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 it, when it burped. Uh, and it, ca it came back down, uh, I topped it off. Transmission temperature is up. I, I put in two quarts of uh, transmission fluid because I wound up leaking some out of the lines when I had it apart. Um, so, all in all, it's, it looks good. Uh, a whole lot of crap to put back together. I, I want to drive it down the road, but uh, I don't think that'd be advisable without no lights or no nothing. Uh, yeah, so there's my my coolant temperature sensor I, I added. Uh, this loop of wire here, that's what, what we call a service loop. So if you have to work on it, you have to, you have to cut it back for something, just needs more room, you got you have extra wire there at that end. Um, and I got it run over with, 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 with some of the other wires. And then over here is where I've got, this ties into my the edge, that edge uh, tuner. Um, one of these has the, uh, this one here has, has your exhaust gas temperature. This one here has my transmission temperature and the, the coolant temperature. So. I've been wanting that coolant temperature. Uh, it's better than idiot light. Just that way, I, I know what's going on with with the water temperature versus the oil temperature. Uh, that might point to if I have a problem with with my radiator or the fluid, the thermostat. Um, oh, I'm mashing that button. Uh, or it may, you know, show you know oil cooler or something. You know, it just just gives me more data, and it didn't cost me that much more for the extra probe. The uh, the, the initial uh, kit to start it is, is what's expensive uh you can you can keep adding on more more of those uh they stack you can, see, you can keep stacking these things uh so anyway like i said i got i got a I got a bunch of work to do Every, everything inside pretty much is done inside the engine compartment i got to get my my air intake i'm, I'm gonna pressure test that uh just just you know now i done cleaned the boots and everything real good i didn't do the hairspray thing i've, I've heard people use hairspray and stuff like can let it sit for 24 hours i ended all that I, if, I, if i pressurize the thing to 20 psi i don't have a leak i don't you know, and, and this thing's not going to give me 30 40 50 psi it's, it's it has stock injectors it's, it's just not going to do that so uh anyway that's that's where i'm at with it uh gonna let it cool off, whatever. I guess I'll pull it back back in the garage. I don't know. Pull, pull it back in the garage tonight. Uh, tomorrow, um, I'll start putting everything else back together, and then I'm gonna get up underneath it. I, I hate working underneath this this truck, but I have this pit that I built um, between the concrete and and the wood. It's 17,000 pounds. So, uh, pull my truck on there. You can't even measure any deflection on the, on, the, on the wood when you pull on there. So it's it's just strong. It's real strong. I put a semi in there, no problem. Uh, the way it's built. But I'm gonna get, get underneath there and get, get get the exhaust system put back on and just double check everything up else up underneath. So I'll catch y'all later, man. All right, I've just about got the same completely put back together. I got to put the bumper on. Um, I mean, I've gone through the trouble of making sure I got every screw. You know, where there was some missing and stuff like. For the lights and stuff uh what i'm doing now is is uh, i'm pressure testing my uh boost Just looking for leaks now, i can hear hear one uh, but this here is the pulley or vacuum pump on the old body style 7.3s i happen to have a a truck body i bought that had a um, bunch of parts in it and apparently they Took the motor out of that truck and put it in their older truck and uh so they had all these set, uh, old 7.3 parts so that just that that just fits there just perfect and i've got it clamped in there if it's not clamping good that thing will pop out it, it, it i mean it'll pop out real good a lot a lot of air behind it that's in your system so um i'm gonna ch check this thing for links like i said i can hear some uh, not sure where they're coming from 
I left the hood off just to make this easier. Let's see if we can't figure out. It's probably gonna be one of these tubes. I sure hear something. Man, get near it, it gets near it a lot. Make some noise there. All right, well, it's right here on this turbo. Pretty well, the sound changes when I get my hand on it. I've only got about 10 psi on it right now, so but run the pressure up too high, my compressor runs so much, and you can't hear nothing when the compressor running. But that's where it's at. There's a little seal in there. Those things feel pain sometimes. If I can't fix that. All right. Well, I still hear some air movement. I don't know if, if, if you know there's a valve open. It's going going in. And, uh, and into the engine. Um, I assume it's something like that is going on. So I took that apart, shook it around a little bit, put it back together, and it stopped the leak. And I wound up, you know, didn't have a leak. Turned the pressure up to about 20. And this one down here, it started. It, it got real, real loud. You could feel it vibrating. Um, so I um, wound up uh, tightening that clamp, and uh, I went through all the other clamps. I found another clamp that. Uh, didn't appreciate being tight and you can see the damaged spot on it right there so it, it, it just jumps right there at that spot so change the clamp out of course I've got plenty of extra parts to work with so anyway boost checks done I can put the hood back on and uh, go from there you can see how big that thing swells up that thing holds a whole lot of air so that thing pops off when that, when that thing pops off you don't have it tight it's going somewhere a lot of air to air to push it out so this is a spare one so i could just leave that one hooked up to if i ever need to check check, check pressures it's it's all all set up to go all right well we got it all done it's uh it's been about oh i don't know four or five days since since we got got everything done um I've run up the road a few times, got about, about 100 miles on it. I had to go pick up some um, antifreeze and distilled water. Um, only problem I had was one of my, my, my fuel line blew off. Um, I was able to get into a, to a gas station and crawl up underneath there and get it put back together. Apparently the engine shifted a little bit on, on the motor mounts and uh, allowed it to pull itself loose. So uh, over here, this is what I've picked up to to do the I'm gonna redo my my coolant so this truck has had the um, uh, this had had the uh, injector cups replaced with the uh, Loctite 620 sealant so it is compatible with the with running the ELC uh, this ELC Thing I'm looking for there is I don't know if you can read that or it says Caterpillar EC1. That's 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 the uh, the standard we're looking for uh, on, on on this thing. So I picked up uh, actually I got five gallons of, of the ELC. That's one extra. Um, and what I plan on doing is I'm gonna flush it with with tap water. I have I have a well. Uh, you know that the, the I, I did take and, and rinse the radiator at, radiator out while I had it out. You know, turned it all the, every which way and run water through it. Um, but I, I picked up 20 gallons of distilled water. You know, that's that's around a dollar a gallon. But you know, you you, you flush it with the tap water, and then you got to get the tap water out. Tap water has minerals, and you don't want to have that inside your engine. So uh, a few flushes with the distilled water will, will push all the tap water out and you never get all the water out of it so i want that to be tap uh not tap water i don't want tap water i want it to be distilled water and then i'll put the four gallons of the uh the uh the concentrated elc in there and um top it off with distilled water and, and I'll, I'll you know that that'll uh the system holds eight gallons so four gallons of the concentrate a little bit of water that's that's left in the system plus topping it off with this and my plan is to take two of these jugs and mix them up 50 50 
uh, with the one, one extra gallon that I bought. So I, I, I keep that in the truck. If I need to top it off, I've got the exact right stuff that I'm looking for. So, but this job's all done. That's, that's, I'll do another video on, on, on the, uh, antifreeze and I'm going to change the oil. I got to put that, uh, that drain valve on here off that other engine. Uh, change, like I say, change the oil and, uh, um, we'll be having some puppies any day now. So, uh, look, look, look for there for a link for, uh, uh, for, for, for that. I have a separate channel for, for my dogs. I am a dog breeder. I, I breed boxer puppies. Um, and, uh, so, but I, I made, made a separate YouTube channel for that. So, Look, look, look for that if, if it's you might be interested in that. It's ain't nothing like cute little puppies playing. So, y'all have a good one, and hopefully, I'll get back out here and get this thing hooked up to the trailer and see what it does on the load. Uh, but it should be fine because this engine was running running great before I wrecked that truck. So, y'all have a good one. Be sure to comment on on the video, like, and and, and subscribe if you haven't already done so. Y'all have a good one. Right, bye now.